Hey folks, Dennis here. Welcome back to the Cincinnati Razorback Room, the beautiful Siloam Springs, Arkansas. Hope y'all are doing well, staying at home and doing what you should be doing there. Staying safe, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. And here I am, getting to play the greatest games in the world from the past and then reliving them on my game board in the 1970 All-Star Games where we're going today. Now this All-Star Game was played in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah! In Riverfront Stadium. Okay, the stadium was brand new. It was opened in 1970. Crosley Field was closed at the end of May, right there at the 1st of June. Crosley Field was closed and Riverfront Stadium opened in Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, the commissioner at the time, I think it was Bowie Kuhn, was real, real worried that the Cincinnati Stadium wouldn't be ready, so he had a contingency plan in case it wasn't to host the game in Atlanta. But the game went off in Cincinnati, and there was many things that happened in this game that was a first. Most people remember this game as the Rose Bowls over Roy, uh, Ray, Ray Fossey in the uh, 10th or 12th inning or whatever, in extra innings to win the game, ending pretty much ending Fossey's career as a star. I mean, he was, he was a journeyman after that, but his career as a star and upcoming superstardom was, was taken away by Rose in that collision. Both of them were injured in that game. Fossey actually suffered a broken collarbone and went on to play for a few weeks before they even realized it. But anyway, I digress. Let me tell you about a few of the firsts that happened in this game. First time in over 15 years that the fans voted the All-Star game, okay? Now, the last time that that had happened, the commissioner had taken away the rights from the fans to vote because the fans had stuffed the ballot box in Cincinnati, by the way. The fans had stuffed the ballot box to see that there were like eight Reds, which was a mediocre team playing in the, in the All-Star game. And so Bowie Kuhn put a real tight watch on the results of the fan voting and the fans got it pretty much right. There were a few Reds on the team bench and Perez started the game and, and uh, Rose was on the team, Morgan was on the team. Uh, a couple of pitchers were on the team. But they didn't stuff the ballot box, so that was good. However, of all the history of all the baseball all-star game voting that had happened in the past and since, in this particular all-star game, a write-in uh, candidate was elected to the starting lineup for the first time, and I want to say probably the only time. I'm not real positive about that, but I think it was. And that's Rico Cardi, who was not on the ballot, but was leading the league in a lot of categories, batting and slugging. He was, he was having a phenomenal year in 1970, and the fans voted him into the starting lineup, okay? Another first that happened in this game in 1969, the, the All-Star Game was scheduled to be played at night, but it got rained out, and so they played it the next afternoon. 1970 was the first All-Star Game to be played under the lights at night, and ever since 1970, every All-Star Game has been played at night. So how about that for some firsts? Yeah. So it was a great ball game. It went extra innings. Now, me, I have a way of doing things that if it doesn't end in the ninth, I call it a tie. It's an all-star game. Nobody gets exhibition. I don't really care. So I'm going to move on through it. Read you the starting lineups real quick. Oh, I'll get to go over the point system real quick, too. You know, I keep track of the points. The American League All-Stars, they're going to start Howard, Frank Howard, Carly Stremski, and Frank Robinson in the outfield. Kilbrew plays third. Aparicio at short. Davey Johnson in second. Boot Powell at first. The catchers, Bill Freehan and Jim Palmer, is the starting pitcher. 84 points for the starting lineup. The entire team consisted of 29 players, and they're, according to Star Power Baseball, 209 points is what they add up to. So stacked team, definitely a stacked team, no doubt about it. On the other hand, remember, 84 points starting. The Nationals have, this is a starting lineup, Rico Cardi in left, Willie Mays in center, 
Aaron and Wright, Perez at third, Kessinger at short, Beckert at second, Dick Allen playing first, Johnny Bench behind the plate, and Tom, terrific, Tom Seaver doing the pitching. Now remember, the Americans had 84 points in their starting lineup. The Nationals have 101. The Americans had 209 total. The Nationals have 244. So on paper, the Nationals are a little bit more stacked than the Americans, but there's only one way to tell. Let's put it down to star power baseball. Let's get on that really impressive game board, and let's just see what happens as we play the 1970 All-Star game. All right, here we go. What's the top of the first inning? Got Tom Seaver pitching over here for the Nationals and uh, Jim Palmer pitching over here. Palmer's a three respin, 10 pips. Seaver's a three respin, 11 pips. Palmer's a 7-3, Seaver's an 8-3. That means that if, if Seaver gets into the eighth inning, which he won't, then we'll start looking about fatigue, Palmer in the seventh. Leading off for the American League is Louis Aparicio. Infielders will be in at third base because if you announce Aparicio, he is a 345 plus. A 345 plus means he's got a chance to bunt. We're going to play the third baseman way in as well as the first baseman. So here we go. Tom Seaver to Louis Aparicio. The game is underway. Seaver spins an X right off the bat. Now, you may see the spins on a little skew because it's an overhead shot and it might look a little different, but that one right there is right in the dead center of the X. That means that he hits him. So the fix is on, Eddie. Eddie, the fix is on. That movie won. No man, uh, eight men out. There you go. So we have to spin the injury card. When we spin the injury card, let's see if he's hurt. He is not. That's a five. Had it landed on the one, he'd have a chance to be injured. Seaver loses a pip because he allows a base runner. Aparicio is a four, five plus. So I put a four and a five over here. And we're underway here in downtown Cincinnati at Riverfront Stadium. The next batter up is, oh, that's an HB right here. I'm, see, I'm keeping score, too, as well as announcing, so hopefully I don't get too distracted. Anyway, he's on. Is he going to try to run on Seaver and Bench? Not with Yaz up. We're going to let him hold the guy on here. And here goes Seaver pitching to Yaz. And he gets a B. Yastrzemski's up. He spins. B means spin the batter. He spins a fly ball. Yaz does have a respin, but he won't use it at this time. That'll be a fly ball to the outfield and one away. That brings up Frank Robinson. Same thing. He's not going to run. Robinson's big, but they're still holding him on. Robinson's a big hitter. He gets a B. Frank into the batter's box. Bam. He gets a ground ball pulled to this side over here. Spin the infield card to see where it goes. It lands on second base. Well, the pulled ground means that it's over here. A middle infielder is a second baseman. So the shortstop feels it. The Nationals at shortstop are playing uh, Don Kessinger, who's a 43. So he's an R3. He's a P4 R3. And it lands on the R4. So the offense gets to choose between double play or advance the base runner. They will take advance the base runner. There are now two outs with a runner on second base. The batter is now Boog Powell. Seaver pitches to Boog. The Boog gets a minus HW. That means if he spins a hit or a walk, he spins again. Boog spins. Spins an eight. That's a fly ball for the third out. In the inning, no runs, no hits. The hit batter left on base. At the end of the half, American zero, and up come the Nationals. The Nationals are going to lead off as they did. The, by the way, the lineups are exactly what they used in the All-Star game. So leading off for the Nationals is Willie Mays. The defense will play back. Willie's not much of a bunt threat. Willie's up. He's, Palmer spins a B, spin the batter. Mays spins and spins a strikeout. A 10 is a strikeout. That's one down. Next batter up is Dick Allen. Dick Allen is not much of a threat to bunt, so they play back. That's a B. It's close to the line, but it's not on the line. It's a B. Allen spins. Spin the batter. Rick, uh, Dick Allen spins. A line between the 10 and the 6. Palmer gets to choose because they're both righties. Palmer chooses the 10 for his 
second strikeout of the ball game. Third batter up is Henry Aaron. Palmer spins again. Palmer spins a B. Henry Aaron is up. And Henry Aaron spins because it's has been the batter. And Aaron spins a two for a ground ball. Three up, three down, nothing across for the Nationals. At the end of one, the score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Here come the Americans once again. And this is Harmon Killebrew. The cards I'm using in this game this time are the cards that are the, um, the um, photo gloss. So the real high quality, the pictures on them are amazingly good. Uh, and you'll see an offer that I'm going to give at the end of the video here. So stay tuned to it. You could uh, purchase these for a very, very reasonable price. Anyway, here's Tom Seaver pitching to Killer. It's a B to Killebrew. That means spin the batter. And the batter spins a 7. That's a single. Seaver, with his respins, is going to say, Killebrew's too likely to hit a home run. I'm going to let him have that single. That's a base hit for Killebrew. It is a pulled single, but we're not worried about it because it's going to be thrown to second base. We see what runner Killebrew is. He is a 0-1, so I use 6 to represent 0 because it looks like it. And 1, and we have 1 out. Take a pip off a of Seaver. Puts him down to 9. They're not going to hold Killebrew on. If I decided to steal with Killebrew, if it landed on any of the S or A ratings, Killebrew would be safe but I'm not willing to take that chance. Up is Frank Howard. Howard is spinning and spins a B from Seaver. Let me look there. Yes, that's a B. It's not quite on the line. Howard spins from the B and strikes out. One away. First strikeout for Seaver. That brings up Davey Johnson. They'll not hold the runner once again. Davey Johnson lets Seaver spin an H minus. That means if he spins a hit, he must spin again. Johnson spins an eight. That's a fly ball for the second out. Once again, you have a runner on first with two outs. They're going to say full count. That's a play that we have designed to use. We get to spin the hit and run card. On the hit and run card, anything except batter misses pitch which is up here, anything but that result, and the runner will be going, and it is a spin the pitcher result. That's on full count. And it's a full count, we're moving. P, spin the pitcher, there it is. Tom Seaver spins, spins a B. Bill Freehand spins and walks. We're gonna allow that one to go because the pitcher is up next. He takes second base. That'll be killer, right? Yeah, killer is on second. Freehand, who is a 1-1 one, one, and represent with just one, that means it's doubled up. And that brings up the pitcher, Palmer, who is an 8 batter. He's a standard batting disc 8, so we use a standard batting disc to represent Palmer at the plate. With two outs, here we go. We're not going to run the runners, we're just going to go for it. Seaver spins a B, spin the batter. The batter spins a 14 for a pop-up in the infield for the third out. And, oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't take that off of Seaver. He is down to eight pips. He started with 11. He is down to eight. And now at the end of one and a half, there is still no score. Up for the Nationals, cleanup hitter, Tony Perez. The Americans are going to get bullpen activity up. And their bullpen is going to be... Fritz Peterson, he will be the first pitcher to come in the game for the Americans. And Tony Perez is up. The Nationals are also going to get some activity in their bullpen. And their bullpen pitcher is going to be none other than hometown boy Jim Merritt of the Cincinnati Reds. So he's up. And Fritz Peterson of the Indians is up. Here we go. Palmer pitching to Perez. He spins a B. Spin the batter. Tony Perez spins a 13. That's a single. Palmer lets that one go. Palmer says no. Respin that one, Tony. So Tony spins it. Palmer burns a respin. Perez spins a ground ball. So it pays off. Palmer works it beautifully. Rico Cardia. Rico spins from Palmer a Z. 
Z is a wild pitch. With nobody on base, the wild pitch still will be, but if Rico Cardi strikes out, <coughs> he will take first base on the wild pitch. Here goes Rico Cardi spinning. He spins a nine, that's a walk. He takes the walk to the house, and the first base runner for the National League is right in candidate Rico Cardi. Cardi is a 1 0, takes a pip off of Palmer, and that brings up the ever dangerous Johnny Bench. They're going to play behind him and play deep. If Cardi wants to run, he can. He won't. Here comes Palmer pitching a B to Johnny Bench. Spin the batter. Bench spins and walks. Palmer says, re spin that Johnny Bench. Bench re spins and spins a ground ball opposite. They were not holding him on, so we need to go to first base or second base. The ball goes to, it says shortstop here. That means it's a middle infielder. That means the second baseman will field it. Second base for them is, uh, Davey Johnson is a 45. The thing says 55. He is not a 55, he's a 45. So the offense chooses between the D and the A. They will choose the A, advancing the runner to second base, two outs. So bench advances the runner, but there are two away. Don Kessinger is up, Palmer spins to Kessinger, and he spins a B to Don Kessinger. Kessinger spins, this is spin the batter, Kessinger spins a fly ball for the third out. After two innings of play, neither team has scored. Okay. Now, you know an All-Star game usually takes a little bit longer than a regular game because you're going to try to get all the great players in. And we got the pitchers warmed up. Here we go. Seaver is going to pitch his third inning. And back in the 70s, man, they pitched their three. The starting pitcher most of the time went his three innings because people wanted to see him pitch. And here's Tom Terrific coming off of the World Series championship. The Reds fans and everybody else wants to see Tom Terrific pitch. A B to Aparicio with the infield in. Aparicio spins a ground ball up the middle. Picked up and thrown to first. One away. Yastrzemski up. Yaz gets an H minus walk minus from Yastrzemski. Here he goes. That's a middle ground ball for the second out. Six is a grounder up the middle. There are now two away. Brings up Frank Robinson from Tom Seaver. Here's the pitch. It's a B. Spin the batter. Frank Robinson spins. Gets a line between the six and the nine. Seaver picks the six. Robinson doesn't argue. And we are through two and a half. And still no score in this big time pitcher's battle. Seaver will be finished. They're going to take him off the field. Put him back in the dugout over here. And we'll let the next pitcher come in when it's his turn. Palmer's going out for his third inning. He is now facing Glenn Beckert. Beckert's up. Palmer spins. Palmer spins a B. Beckert spins and spins a base hit. Palmer makes him respin using his final respin. Beckert spins on the respin and spins a fly out. One away. Tom Seaver is up. They're going to pinch hit with Tom Seaver and they're going to pinch hit with. None other than Felix Mion. Felix Mion of the New York Mets is pinch hitting for Seaver in the third. Palmer spins and spins a B. Mion spins. One of the toughest guys to strike out, Felix Mion. Mion walks. Palmer has no respins left, so the walk stands. Second walk given up by Palmer. Leon's on first. He is a 22. Stands on first base. And now up is Willie. Say hey, kid, Mays. Here's Palmer pitching to Mays. You got a B with one out and a runner on first. Mays. Ground ball. Oppo. They were holding him on, whether I said it or not, they were. The ball is hit to second base over here. The second baseman is Davey Johnson. He is a 45. A P4, he is a P4. By the way, you lost a pick there, Palmer. He is a P4. Defense chooses double play. G-O-D-P. 
P O, and that's the inning. Now, if we were going to play in a regular game, that would give Palmer his pip back, but Palmer's done because that was his third inning, and so it doesn't really matter. Okay, but Mays hits into a uh, double play for the third out, and now you have some substitutions happening. First substitution is for the National League, and that'll be Jim Merritt. Merritt is a six with no respin, so he has six pips before he fatigues. Put him up in there. They're going to get another pitcher up in the bullpen for the Nationals, and that's going to be Gaylord Perry. Gaylord Perry is up for the Nationals. And for the Americans, you have Boog Powell coming up to bat. Merritt is the new pitcher, and here comes Boog Powell. A lefty to a lefty, an F, that's one away. Fly ball anywhere, one down. Here's Harmon Killebrew, who singled his last time up. Killebrew gets a walk minus. Killebrew spins and spins a ground ball, two away. Frank Howard's up from Jim Merritt. And Frank Howard gets a B, spin the batter. Frank Howard spins himself and gets a strikeout. That's the second time Howard's gone down on strikes. And so the Americans go quietly in the fourth. No score after three and a half. The new pitcher for the Americans is Fritz Peterson. Fritz is a 7-0. So you put a 7 out here, but he has no respins. Fritz goes here. They're going to get up another pitcher in the American League bullpen. And that pitcher is going to be Mel Stottlemyre. Big time pitcher for the New York Yankees. So we've gone through three and a half. The Nationals are coming up. They got the meat of the order coming up with Alan Aaron and Perez. Here we go. Here's Dick Allen. He gets an F from Fritz Peterson. That's a fly ball, one away. Here's Henry Aaron. Aaron gets a G from Fritz Peterson. That is a ground ball, two away. Wow, Peterson's smoking. That's what you get for eight points out there. Here comes Tony Perez. Perez gets a B, so he gets to spin. Here he goes. Perez spins. A base hit. A single up the middle for Tony Perez. Runner on first base. That'll be Perez. Turning him over. He is a 1-2. One, 1-2. Two. One, two. Bringing up Rico Cardi. Take a pip off of him. So he's down to six. Rico Cardi's up. They're going to play the full count with two outs. They're going to play behind him. And here's the pitch. The spin. Again, a P. That means spin the pitcher. Anything but batter misses pitch. You spin the pitcher on full count. Rico Cardi up. Rico spins on the, on the B result. It's a four. And they'll take the third out right there. The four is a fly ball pulled, and we are now through four innings of play and no score. I'm boring you guys to death, aren't I? Can't get anything going here. Okay, we have Davey Johnson, Bill Freehand, and a pinch hitter for Fritz Peterson. So Merritt goes back to work for his second inning. Merritt throws a B to Davey Johnson. Davey spins a home run right in the center. He hit it out of the ballpark, out of the world. Davey Johnson takes Jim Merritt yard, and the Americans are on the board. It is one to nothing right there. Boom. Davey Johnson, a swat out of the yard. All right. Bill Freehand's the next hitter. Freehand get a spin from Merritt, and it's a walk minus. Freehand spins, a single. Ooh, Merritt's getting lit up here in this second inning of work. So, 1969 manager McGill Hodges takes a trip to the mound, and he will relieve Jim Merritt of his pitching duties right there and bring in Gaylord Perry. Merritt goes one plus innings, and here comes Gaylord. Gaylord is a 7-2, so he's going to be a 9 total pips, okay, and 2 respins. So that's how you add that up, like that. It's 2 respins right there. 
You have Bill Freehands on first base after that base hit. He's a 1-1. The pitcher now comes up, which would be Fritz Peterson. They're going to relieve Fritz of his duties, and they're going to pinch hit for Fritz, and they're going to pinch hit with here you go, Amos Otis. Amos Otis is going to pinch hit for Peterson. Otis pinch hitting in the fifth. And you got a runner in first and nobody out. Gaylord Perry to Amos Otis. A B. Amos Otis spins a fly ball. Amos has one respin. He is going to use it. Because this is the only time he's going to bat. Might as well use that respin. He does, and it's a grounder up the middle. This could be bad. The ball is hit to the second baseman. That's Glenn Beckert. Beckert is a 23. It's a 55. He is not. They'll take the A. The offense will select the A instead of the D. The D would have been a double play. They'll take the A, which advances the runner. So you have one out and a runner on second base. Bring up the top of the order, Luis Aparicio. Here we go. Perry to Aparicio. He spins a B, that spin the batter. Aparicio spins and spins a liner, which is a 5-6. Okay, this is a controversial call right here. Perry would have taken the 6. Aparicio wants the 5, and so they're going to run the instant replay. The Americans will roll the dice first. They roll a 10. The Nationals have to tie or beat that 10. The Nationals roll a 7. The call on the field is overturned, and Aparicio lines that ball fair down the line, and it's a triple. So Aparicio winds up on third base. The run scores from second. Aparicio's on third, and that is a triple. Perry gives up a hit. The run is charged to Jim Merritt, closing the book out on him. And the Americans now lead two zip. How about that, guys? The instant replay. Here comes the next batter. The infield will play in. All four infielders are going to be in. Carl Yastrzemski's up. A B. I had to remove that pip off of Perry. A B for Yaz. Yaz walks. Perry takes that. It sets up the double play. You have a pip off of Perry. Yaz is on first. He's a 22. And that brings up Frank Robinson. They're going to hold on Yaz so he won't run. 2-2 two is a pretty good runner. Here comes Perry. Perry pitches. Throws a walk minus. So he's not going to walk Robinson on the first spin. Here's Robbie right here. Robbie spins a ground ball. He has two respins on his card. He's going to burn one right here. With one out, runners on first and third, he's burning it. Here we go. Respin for Robbie, and he gets a fly ball to the outfield. The fly ball to the outfield, where does it go? It goes to right field. We use the inner ring. Goes to right field. The right fielder is uh, Henry Aaron. He's a 43. Aaron will throw the ball to second base, holding the runner. And Frank Robinson gets a sack fly. So the runner on third scores. Robinson gets a ribby, and that run is charged to Gaylord Perry. But there are now two away. And up comes Boog Powell. They're going to full count, so that means that the defense plays behind him. Powell goes into the batter, misses pitch. That's a strikeout. We'll do the math. Full count, batter, misses pitch, strike three. Pretty easy. In the inning, they put two up. And the score now, after four and a half, the American League two, the National League zero. Here they come. The new pitcher for the American League is Mel Stottlemyre. Okay, so Palmer went his three. Peterson went one. And now it's Stottlemyre. Okay, 
Mel Stottlemyre is coming in. He is a 8-1. And 8-1 means he gets 9 pips with 1 respin. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 1 respin right there. Okay. We're going to get some more activity up in the National Bullpen. In the National Bullpen, the new pitcher over there is going to be the Cincinnati, the, uh, the San Francisco Giants, Hoyt Wilhelm. I think he's with the Braves that year. And over in the American League, they're also going to get up a pitcher. And they're going to get up Gaylord Perry's brother, Jim. Jim Perry will be up in the American bullpen. Okay. Johnny Bench set to lead things off for the Nationals in the bottom of the fifth. Stottlemyre to Bench. A B. Bench spins. Spin the batter. Kick the result. Here he goes. A 12 is a ground ball. One away. Don Kessinger is up. Kessinger is the shortstop. Kessinger will go ahead and hit. Stottlemyre to Kessinger. Kessinger gets a B. He spins and spins a single. Stottlemyre will burn a respin, his only one, to try to keep Kessinger off base. Kessinger respins and spins a walk. So that respin was a waste. Anyway. He's a 21. Stottlemyre loses a pip. And we're going to pinch hit for Glenn Beckert with a second baseman from the Cincinnati Reds. It's going to be Joe Morgan. Morgan will take Glenn Beckert's place in the fifth inning. Morgan is a 2B43. I write that down. Comes in the fifth. Okay. They're going to hold the runner on because he's 21. Morgan spins, uh, or rather Stottlemyre spins to Morgan. That's a B. Morgan spins and spins a grounder up the middle. Morgan does have, look at that, he has a respin. He's going to use it right now. As soon as he comes in the game, Morgan uses his respin because there's one out and a runner on. Morgan thinks this is the inning. Let's go. Morgan hits a fly. Two away. They're going to pinch hit for the pitcher. And they're going to use, uh, let's look here and see who we're going to pinch hit with. They're going to pinch hit for the pitcher with Joe Torrey. Torrey gets to pinch hit for the pitcher. Pinch it in the fifth. So that'll do it for Gaylord Perry. Take him out and put him away. Joe Torrey enters the batter's box. They're going to send the guy on full count. That's spin the pitcher. That's a B. Spin the batter. Torrey. Walks. No respins for Stottlemyre. Torrey is on. That's the second walk given up by Stottlemyre this inning. So Torrey goes to first. He's a 1-1. One, one. So I'll just take 1-1 one, one and put it there because you don't need more than that. That brings up Willie Mays from Mel Stottlemyre. Here's the big pitch right here. Right there it is. A B. Mel Stottlemyre gives Mays a spin. May spins and gets a fly ball. He's going to use one of his two respins by his 23 points. May spins again and gets a fly ball for the third out. No runs, no hits, two runners left. At the end of five, American two, national zero. The new pitcher for the Americans is going to be Hoyt Wilhelm. He has a five with four respins. That makes him nine pips. And four respins. Four is the most a pitcher can have. So you can, as you can tell, Hoyt Wilhelm's quite a pitcher. Okay. That brings up Harmon Killebrew from Hoyt Wilhelm. Here's the first pitch. Let's see. He gets a B. Killebrew. You gotta stay with me. I keep score on this. Killebrew spins. 
strikes out. So first batter up, strikes out. Howard, Frank Howard now. Frank Howard spins a B from Wilhelm and gets a liner, a 6-9 liner. Wilhelm takes the 6, Howard won't question it. A ground ball for the second out. Davey, home run Johnson's coming up. Here's Johnson right here. Minus Homer from, that's a good one to spin to this guy. And he strikes out for the third out. Two fans in the inning for Wilhelm. Cruise right along. The knuckleball's working today, boys. Knuckleball's working. Stoudemire's going to go out for his second inning. Nationals are going to get a pitcher up. The pitcher that they're going to get up is Bob Gibson. Okay. Stoudemire is now pitching to the meat of the order. Allen. Aaron Perez. Here we go. Stoudemire gives a B to Dick Allen. Allen spins and walks. Jim Perry is quite loose. That's the third walk given up by Stoudemire, who's normally a high control pitcher. Allen is a 34, quite fast. Quite fast. That brings up Henry Aaron. They're going to hold the runner on. You lose a pip here. Move on. Here comes the pitch. A B to Henry Aaron. Aaron spins. And Aaron gets a line between the 10 and the 4. They're going to take the strikeout. One down. The, the, the righty to righty. So the pitcher will take the strikeout. One away. That brings up Tony Perez. Tony Perez is playing third base. And what they're going to do is they're going to move Dick Allen over to third base. They're going to pinch hit for Tony Perez with Willie McCovey. McCovey's going to be the pinch hitter for Perez. McCovey will come in and play first base. Richie Allen, Dick Allen will go over to third. Allen, I have to look at his rating. Allen is a rated third base 1-3. Okay, so I write that in, 3B13, Perez is done, I cross him off, McCovey comes in, in the 6th, and he's a 1B, look at the back of him there, he's a 1B23, and he is up, they'll hold the runner, and here goes Stoudemire, pitching to Willie McCovey, McCovey swings, and Hits a fly ball. That's close to the line, but not quite. It's a fly ball to right field for the second out. Two away. Rico Cardi is up. They're going to pinch hit for the National League right-in candidate that the fans wanted to see. They got to see him twice. And the new guy that's coming in, the fans have no problem seeing this. Coming up to bat, Roberto Clemente. He is right field 25, and he will go in for Cardi, and he'll play right, moving or he'll play left as a 25, moving Aaron. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll move Aaron over to left, and we'll put Clemente out in right, because we want that arm out there in right field. Now, with two outs, they're not going to play full count. They're going to spin the pitcher. He spins a B. Clemente spins. And spins a four, he's going to burn his respin and spins a base hit anywhere. Let's see where it's to. It's hit to left field. The left fielder is Frank Howard's a 31. He must, since he has a one, either a P or an R, he must spin the outfield card. There's no second chances. He spins, he's a P1, not a P2. So the base hit that Clemente just got. Howard makes a bad throw, misses the cutoff man, and both runners move up on the bad throw. So we now have runners on second and third. And A moves the runners up. Clemente is a 23. A pip's gone from Stottlemyre. That brings up Johnny Bench, hometown hero right here. And Johnny Bench is up with Kessinger on deck. Stottlemyre decides to pitch the bench. It's an all we don't walk anybody in the All-Star game. Here we go. Johnny Bench gets the B from Kessinger and spins a line between the 8 and the 3. 
Stottlemyer will take the eight. Johnny Bench will re-spin his last re-spin. Here he goes. Johnny Bench spinning and spins a line between the nine and the ten. The Americans take the ten. The Nationals take the nine. Nationals are going to re to replay that. Here's the here's the challenge. The Nationals spin a seven or roll a seven. The Americans have to roll a seven or higher. I do that a lot. That's a two and a two. So the replay, I, R, and L, plus. The pitch is overturned. Johnny Bench walks. So it's between the nine and the ten. He takes the nine. And that's the fourth walk given up by Stottlemyre. And Johnny Bench is a two-two runner. So he goes to first base. That brings up Don Kessinger for the Nationals. And they're going to pinch hit for Don Kessinger with another good hitter. They're going to use Cito Gaston to pinch hit. No, they won't. They're going to go with the lefty. They're going to go with La Grande Orange, Rusty Staub here in the sixth, pinch hitting for Kessinger. He's a pinch hitter right there. And they're going to bring in Mankey to play shortstop, and he will bat in the seven hole. Okay, so with the bases loaded and two outs, Stottlemyre pitches to Staub. Stottlemyre gets a beat. Staub is up. Here he goes. Staub walks. No respins. That's a base on balls number five for Stottlemyre in the third this inning. How about that, huh? And that drives in Dick Allen. Staub gets a ribby. And it's now a two to one game. Kessinger's gone. Staub is on base. He is a one two. And I'm going to pull Stottlemyre out of the game because he's just performing horribly. I'm going to bring in Jim Perry, but I'm going to do a double switch. What I'm going to do on this, I'm going to take Davey Johnson out of the game, and I'm going to put Sandy Alomar hitting in the nine hole, and the pitcher will bat in Davey Johnson's place. So I have to write those down. I'll report it to the umpire first. Okay. And then you have uh, Alomar going to play second base. Sandy Alomar, the original Sandy Alomar, who is a 2B33. And he's hitting in the nine hole. Okay, see what I'm saying about these All-Star games? They take a while. So I had to have Alomar hitting in the nine hole now. And now you've got bases loaded. You've got uh, two away. You've got Jim Perry coming in the game. He is a, uh, let's see here, so we've got Perry. Stottlemyre goes one and two thirds. Let's see, three, four, five and a half. Yeah, one and two thirds for Stottlemyre. Jim Perry is a six one, so he gets a seven with one respin, like yay. I always like to do it as a six and a one. I don't like putting five and two up there because I like to get rid of those dice as quickly as possible. Infield's back for Joe Morgan. Perry spins to Morgan. Gets a B. Well, was close to hitting him. He missed him, though. Morgan spins and spins a walk. What's new? Joe Morgan walking? How about that? Morgan led the league in walks a few times, huh? That drives in another run to tie the score. Clemente ties the score as he trots in. Morgan gets an RBI. That's a walk for Perry, an earned run charge to Stottlemyre. Now we get a little bit of speed on the bases here with Morgan, who's a 55 plus. There's still two outs. And the pitcher, Hoyt Wilhelm, is up, and they're going to pinch hit for Wilhelm. See what I mean about these all-star games. The, the Americans are going to get a bullpen pitcher up right away. They're going to get up Sudden Sam McDowell. 
in the bullpen, and they're going to put another pitcher up with him. They're going to get Catfish Hunter up at the same time. The Nationals are going to take Hoyt Wilhelm out of the game, and they're going to pinch hit, and this is a big time, they're going to pinch hit with Jim Hickman of the Cubs. So, Hickman comes up in the sixth, pinch hitting, and here we go, man, bases loaded and two outs. Jim Hickman. And now that's a B. Hickman spins. And that's a strikeout. And you cannot respin a strikeout. Hickman's got a respin. I think he's got one respin, doesn't he? No, he's a zero. So it would have been a strikeout anyway. But that's the third out. First strikeout for Jim Perry. And it's all tied after six innings of play. 2-2. Two two. For the Nationals, coming in to pitch is Bob Gibson. He's an 8-3, which is 11, so he's got 11 pips with three respins. There's Gibson. We're going to get some bullpen activity up because it's getting late in the game. They're going to get up Claude Osteen and Wayne Simpson. Both bullpens firing on all cylinders right now. Bill Freehand is set to lead off. They're going to pinch hit for Bill Freehand. Coming in the game, it's going to be Ray Fossey. <laughs> Do you see what's happening here? Tie ball game. Uh-oh. Fossey's going to pinch hit for Freehand. Okay. Freehand's done. This is in the eighth in the uh, seventh inning, I'm sorry. I got to write down that Fossey is a C-35. Uh, Put that on my catcher sheet. Fossey steps in. Gibson looks him over. Spins. And here we go. Off to the races. Gibson spins a B. Fossey spins a grounder. There is now one away. Now in the nine hole, you have Sandy Alomar batting in the nine hole because we replaced the pitcher that way when the double substitution. So here comes Sandy Alomar, his first at bat, and he spins a ground ball for the second out. Up now is the leadoff hitter, Louis Aparicio. Aparicio's up, and he spins a B. Gibson B to Aparicio, who strikes out. That's a 10 as a strikeout uh, for the third out. No runs, no hits, nobody left. The Americans go down in order, and Jim Perry's still on the mound, and he's staying out there on the mound to pitch to Willie Mays. Perry came in and did quite well. I was going to strike out and walk the guy in, but kept it going pretty good. Here goes Willie Mays. Willie Mays from Jim Perry gets a B. Mays, boom. Spins, a grounder. Mays will use his second respin. He's now out of respins. On his second respin, he spins the same thing. One down. Here comes Dick Allen now playing third base. Allen spins, or Perry spins to Allen. A, a B, Ricky. Dick Allen spins. A walk. The Nationals are doing a lot of walking. A lot of looking at pitches, what they're doing. That's a 34 on base. That's a tip off of him. And that brings up Henry Aaron. Okay. The catcher's Fossey at a 35. They're not going to run on him, but they are holding, the Americans are holding him on. A B to Henry Aaron. Here he goes. Aaron spins. A single. Perry says respin. Aaron respins the single, and it is a. Single pull to be left or center. It is played to left field. The left fielder for them is Howard, a 31. You must spin the outfield card. He's a one, any of those. A4 batter. Let's see what Aaron is. Aaron is a three. So the Nationals don't win. The Americans pick between A and M. They will take the M. Stops at second. Henry Aaron stops at first. He's a 35. 
That's a base hit. His first, Perry's first hit allowed. Pip off Aaron. And now you got Willie McCovey coming up with two on. McCovey has not used a respin and he has two. So let's see how this plays out. Manager takes a trip to the mound. They are going to replace Jim Perry. Right now, they're replacing him after a third. Perry pitches two thirds of an inning, and in comes Sudden Sam McDowell. What this does is it now gives the American League a respin with McDowell, because McDowell has one respin, and he is a six plus one is seven pips. Okay. And he's got that big K. Also, he's a lefty to a lefty, so it gives the Americans the lines, which is brutally important right now on this McCovey card. Here we go. Bang! McDowell, a B to Willie Big Swish. McCovey, here he goes. The swish spins. A line. Boom! Hey, called it. There it is. Between the two and the seven, McDowell will take the two. McCovey will take the respin. McCovey says, ha ha, wait a minute, I got two of them. So he's going to use one right here. Here goes McCovey. And with his respin, he strikes out for the second out. That brings up Roberto Clemente. Clemente has used his respin. He has no more. McDowell spins to Clemente. Clemente gets a W. Anything but a walk, he must respin. Anything but a nine, he has to respin. He spins a 10. That's not a 9. He must respin. Here we go. So he respins. A fly ball out for the third out. Clemente gone with the wind. So we're still at 2-2 two to two after 7. Remember I told you the way I play, if it ends in a tie, it's a tie. I will not play extra innings on these All-Star games. I don't think that they should. I think if it's a tie, it's a tie. We don't need a win. It's an exhibition game. Okay, Gibson going in for his second inning of work. He's facing the meat of the order, Yaz, Brooks Robinson, and Boog Powell. Here we go. Yaz. A B from Bob Gibson. Yaz doubles. Gibson makes him respin that. And Yaz hits an infield pop-up. One away. Frank Robinson's the batter. Gibson had three respins. He's down to two. Frank Robinson is up. A B to Frank Robinson. Robinson spins a six. He's using his second respin. And he uses it to no avail. That's the second out. That's a 12. Boog Powell is the batter. Boog, one of the better hitters, but on the bench over here, they have a monster, a good one. They have, let me find him here, they have Rod Carew. In this situation, I need a home run more than I need a single, so I'm going to let Powell hit. Boog swings at the Gibson offering for a B. Powell gets to spin. Powell spins a base hit. Gibson will let that ride. He lets that ride. He doesn't need that home run right yet. So Gibson gives up a hit. That's a pip off of Gibson. Powell goes to first on a 1-1. And now they'll bring up Harmon Killebrew. They'll play behind him. He's not running on a full count. You want Killebrew to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Gibson lost his pip. Yes, he did. That's a G. Killebrew with two respins will make Gibson respin that. That's one respin for Killebrew. Gibson respin gets a B. Killebrew up. Killebrew spins. A nine. That's a walk. Gibson will make him respin. And he spins a six. Grounder up the middle for the third out. How about that? Both of them use defensive respins. Respinning the other guy. Pretty cool, huh? We are now in the bottom of the eighth inning in a two to two ball game. Sudden Sam going back to the hill. Johnny Bench up. Dennis Mankey to follow with Joe Morgan after that. Here we go.
Sudden Sam throws the first pitch for a B. Johnny Bench swings at it and grounds. Bench has already burnt his respin, so that's one away. Here comes Dennis Menke, his first at bat. Menke gets a walk from Sudden Sam. Anything but a walk, he respins. He gets a grounder, respin it. He hits a home run. Dennis Menke hits it out of the ballpark, off of Sudden Sam. A home run for Dennis Menke in the bottom of the eighth inning. A solo shot just clearing the wall. Holy cow. That's barely in there, man. I mean, it's in there, but it's barely in there. Even if it was a line, he's got the lines off of Sudden Sam. Nice job. Mankey clears the wall. Sudden Sam in disgust. He's just really not liking that at all. Okay, here comes Joe Morgan. Morgan strikes out. Sam reaches back and grabs a little bit extra right there and tells Morgan, I got your back right here. And a pinch hitter for it, no. They're going to let Bob Gibson finish this one out. Gibson's coming to the bat. McDowell pitching to Gibson, gives him a B. That's a line, that's a B. Gibson gets a line, 8-9, and always the pitchers never get the lines. The, 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 the batting card never gets the line. The pitcher always gets the line against the batting card. And so that'll be the third out. But one run scores. And Gibson is going out for his third inning of work. The bullpens are both heated up. In the American bullpen, you've got Dave McNally and Catfish Hunter ready to go. McDowell, one kick to Mankey. Here comes the meat of the order. Frank Howard's up. Then McDowell gets lifted for a pinch hitter. Holy cow, what can we do? Let's see it. Gibson pitching to Frank Howard. Howard has not used a respin yet. He's got two. He gets a line, eight, nine. Gibson takes the eight. Howard says, I'm going to use my respin. Here we go. And he strikes out Frank Howard. One away. Nice job, Gibson. Pinch hitting for the pitcher. They need a home run. They've got a good home run hitter right there in Willie Horton. But they want the lines, and they're going to bring in Tony Oliva to pinch hit. So we got Oliva pinch hitting for the pitcher in the seven hole in the ninth inning. Gibson pitches to Oliva. H minus. Gets a hit, respin. A strikeout. Nobody respins a strikeout. So Oliva down on strikes. Two away. That brings up. Ray Fossey. They have another pinch, uh, another catcher in there. They're going to pinch hit for Fossey. This time they're going to bring in Willie Horton for Ray Fossey. Okay, Horton hitting in the eight hole. They have Moses in there to catch, so they're good from the Yankees. And here's Horton on a B. Horton strikes out to end the ball game. You can't respin a strikeout. Gibson comes back and strikes out the side, and the ball game ends. Final score: Americans two, Nationals three. All decided on a nine, on an eighth inning Dennis Mankey home run off a of sudden Sam McDowell, and the Nationals come away victorious, three to two. There you have it, folks. The Nationals. Take it on a Dennis Mankey eighth inning solo homer off of Sam McDowell. What a ball game. Lots of great pitching right there. And that's typically what's happening today in the All-Star games. You're seeing all these 100-mile-an-hour pitchers coming in and doing their thing. And somebody cranks one, and there you got it. What a great ball game that was. Ebb and flow that came out to the lead, came back and fought back, and then nothing, 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 nothing. Gibson comes in in the ninth and strikes out Frank Howard, Tony Oliva, and Willie Horton. Man, three big guns. And Gibson just mows them down, becoming uh, just boom. A win 
gets the win in uh, his last three innings. What a what a game! Oh man, it was excellent. Hope I answered some questions for you about playing too, because we did the instant replay a couple of times, challenged it, and uh, both calls got overturned. One was a walk strikeout. I can't remember what the other one was, uh, but we had it instant replay. The AL won theirs, and the National League won theirs. So you got instant replay. You had a lot of line spins. You saw that one where I brought in McCovey and McDowell pitching to McCovey there. We had the lines and made McCovey respin. It was quite cool. Now, so you can do your lefty righty matchups. Didn't do any stealing bases. No injuries happened. Everything was good there because we had a lot of players played. I think I played uh, 15, 16, 17 players for the American League and uh, looked like 20 players for the National League. So a lot of players got to play quick ball game that happens that fast. That's what I'm talking about in Star Power Baseball. You can do this. If I wasn't doing video and commentary, doing all the scorekeeping and all that, you can run through this game in 30 minutes. I mean, no problem at all, especially if you're playing somebody that knows what they're doing also. And just have a good time with it, or you can take as long as you want and just enjoy the game and just have some fun with it and relive it. Like, a, like a, the first, uh, this is the third time I've played this game. The 70 All-Star game. I just I, I, I printed the guys off yesterday, cut them out yesterday, and played two games yesterday. And I always try to play before I get you guys um, involved so that I kind of know the players. And man, what what a fun time. And the series wound up two to one. The Nationals won two to one. Both times that the Nationals won, it was on a late inning home run. The Americans blew them out in the first time that I did it. So it's a lot of fun. This is good. Now, here's the offer. I told you guys that I was going to make you guys an offer that was really, really cool about um, this set of cards. If you want these cards, the National and American League All-Stars from 1970, either team, you send me in, a, in an envelope, mail me, you can get my email address, warhammerworldhotmail.com, email me and I'll send you my mailing address, all that. Mail, somebody did it for me the other day. Send me a $5 bill in the mail. Put it in an envelope and send me a $5 bill and I'll send you one of the teams, national or American, your choice. If you want both teams, send a $10 bill. It's that simple. I mail them out in just regular envelopes. Takes three stamps. I've already done this. Anywhere in the United States, that's where this goes. I don't know what it costs to go to Canada. So you probably, if you're, gonna, if you're in Canada, send me 10 for one and 20 for both. How about that? Because I don't know what it costs to mail you. And if you guys are in Canada, you're going to pay more. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, if you want one of the teams, five bucks, mail it to me in an envelope. If you want both teams, 10 bucks, give me a call, 479-263-3036. Got game boards for sale if you need game boards. I have them with the six spinners on them, look just like mine. I'm using a standard game board now that doesn't have the glare like mine does. Mine's plexiglass and has the glare, and I'm using a dull coat finish on the new ones that I do so they have no glare at all. Anyway, give me a call. Until next time, and I don't know what the game will be next time, but it'll be just as exciting. I'm Dennis. You're out there. I'm in here. Stay safe and keep spinning.